počinje još jedno izdanje Al Jazeera svijeta. Ja sam Azra Hadžić, u ovoj emisiji gledajte. Studenti i profesori uprko s brojnim rizicima širom SAD-a održavaju pro-palestinske proteste. Iz gaze upućene poruke zahvale. Uništene gotovo sve obrazovne institucije u Gazi, a ubijeno više od 350 nastavnika i profesora. Izraelske snage uništile hiljade embrija u napadu na najveću kliniku za liječenje neplodnosti u Gazi. S njima uništeni i snovi brojnih palestinaca o roditeljstvu. Širom SAD-a studenti sedmicama protestiraju protiv rata u Gazi. Priključuju im se i društveni aktivisti. Mjere sigurnosti pojačane su u blizini mnogih kampusa, a policija je do sad uhapsila više od hiljadu demonstranata. Studenti traže od univerziteta prekid veza s Izraelom te da SAD prestane vojno pomagati tu državu. Pojedini univerziteti suspendirali su one koji su odbili prekinuti proteste. U nastavku donosimo priču Al Jazeera Plus o svjedočenjima studenta kako su ispred Univerziteta Kolumbija početkom ove godine pretrpjali napad hemijskom substancom tokom propalestinskih protesta. Policija je pokrenula istragu o incidentu, ali više od dva mjeseca nakon napada nema osumnjičenih. Oh my gosh, like it smells like someone is dying. We smell that. That's what I was hospitalized for, severe blurred vision. These students are describing the moment they suffered an alleged chemical attack during a pro-Palestine rally at one of the world's most prestigious universities. Students say the chemical smelled like skunk, which has been used by Israeli forces against Palestinians. We're not safe in the West Bank. We're not safe in Gaza. Even in the U.S., we aren't safe. In this report, we reveal previously unpublished images and footage of suspicious activity at the protest. More than two months after the incident, no suspects have been named, while students speaking up for Palestinian rights have received death threats, been doxed, and targeted by professors. Does me being Palestinian, does that inherently mean I'm, I'm a terrorist? Is that's, that's, that's how they're treating us. Some of the students being attacked have lived through the violence of Israel's occupation. I collected their body parts with my own hands. When we say that our lives are endangered here, and I know it because I lived it before. So why are Palestinians and their supporters being subjected to violence at a U.S. Ivy League institution? And what is the university doing about it? It's like someone said the P word, didn't they? <laughs> Palestine! Oh no! Shut Colombia down! We're here to ensure the safety of the event. There's no reason that we should get attacked, but we know that there has been a lot of escalatory violence. Two weeks after the alleged chemical attack, New York students and protesters are gathering outside Columbia's campus to show solidarity with Palestinians and the students who were allegedly sprayed. An attack on one of us is ultimately an attack on all of us. Them trying to silence and threaten pro-Palestine students at Columbia is only going to bring more attention to the movement for Palestinian liberation at Columbia, which is what we're doing here today. There was also a small group of pro-Israel counter-protesters. I think that there are much more, the rhetoric and the ideas that come in for them are much more anti-Israel than pro-Palestine. Now they're saying genocide. What the hell did you think was going to happen? If you remain in the roadway and refuse to use the available sidewalk, you will be subject to arrest. Student leaders found workarounds to avoid getting arrested. We know history and we know that Colombia is standing on the wrong side of history. The American Civil Liberties Union says that since January, NYPD appears to be using sound amplification permits as an excuse to shut down pro-Palestine rallies. By the end of the march, 12 people were taken into custody and two were arrested. I just had a sign in my hand and he violently went like this and put the sign out of my face and then he hit me. If I was assaulted by anybody else on the street, who do you expect to do something? The cops and a cop assaults me.
So it happened on the steps up there as we were all gathered together. Layla was one of the dozens of students who says they were sprayed with a chemical substance on January 19th. She's Palestinian American and has experienced immense loss amid Israel's bombardment of Gaza. 14 of my family members were killed. My family is Palestinian Christian and they were killed by one of the Gaza church bombings. It's been really challenging to be on campus right now. Another Palestinian student says he received a death threat at the protest. A counter protester comes towards me out of the crowd and he calls me by name and he said, Mosin Medawi, I'm going to take your life. I'm going to kill you. And I smiled at him and I said, what are you afraid of, the truth? He called me in front of public safety, you're a Nazi. Not once, couple times. Public safety done nothing about that. Philosophy student Mosa Madawi is a Palestinian refugee from the West Bank who experienced Israel's occupation as a child and has lost more than 20 members of his extended family since October. When I was five years old, seeing the Israeli army blasting into our home, coming to arrest my uncles. When I was 11 years old, my uncle Thayer, he was assassinated on the hands of the Israeli army. And when I was 12 years old, they killed seven Palestinians from the refugee camp in the middle of the night. I collected their body parts with my own hands. I peeled their skin off the wall. I put their body parts in plastic bags. No child should experience this. I was 12 years old at that time. I saw my best friend getting shot in front of my eyes on the hand of an Israeli soldier. And when I was 15, an Israeli soldier shot me in my leg. That changes the way how we feel, the way how we see the world. When we talk about what's happening in Gaza, it triggers old memories. The sound of, of, of bombing, the loss of houses, the killing of people. We are experiencing loss every day for the past 75 years. It's these kinds of realities that have pushed Palestinian students to demand the university divest from entities involved in Israel's occupation. That was the goal of the January 19th protest, where students say they were sprayed by a chemical. After I attended the protest, I felt so sick. I kept on throwing up. I had a headache that would not go away. My eyes were burning and I was just like, this is not normal. Like something is wrong here. This is a note that I got from the doctor. So the diagnosis I got was exposure to potentially hazardous chemical. And the symptoms I was experiencing include nausea, fatigue, vomiting, headache, loss of appetite. The university's first instinct was to blame us. The administration's initial response focused on how the protest was unsanctioned. In the days after the protest, at least 10 students were hospitalized and sought medical care. Students believe the substance could be skunk, a crowd control chemical used by Israeli forces against Palestinians in the West Bank. Skunk is known to cause intense nausea, vomiting, difficulty breathing, skin irritation, and eye and abdominal pain. AJ Plus has not confirmed the substance that was reportedly released on the day. At this point, I still experience eye pain. A student member of Jewish Voice for Peace says she was also sprayed by a substance. She spoke to AJ Plus on the condition of anonymity, fearing for her safety and backlash from her community. I went in with like severe eye pain, which was my initial diagnosis, and the cause was chemical inhalation. She was hospitalized for temporary vision loss in the days after. The student describes an interaction between pro-Palestinian Jewish students and two pro-Israel individuals at the end of the protest. They approached us and started kind of verbally harassing us. The only thing they wanted to tell us is that we were shameful and, and disgraceful and disgusting. They kept reiterating that we should take the Jews, you know, that word off of our banner because we weren't real Jews. Students believe the two individuals are likely responsible for the alleged chemical attack. AJ Plus could not confirm if they are responsible for the reported incident. But what AJ Plus can confirm is that there was unusual activity at the January 19th protest. We analyzed footage shot from multiple angles of the protest that student journalists and activists have shared with us. The two individuals who reportedly harassed the Jewish students are both students at Columbia and former Israeli soldiers. Before the banner interaction, both individuals infiltrated the pro-Palestinian protest masked with kafia-like scarves. And even earlier, the individual in the orange jacket first appears to show up at the pro-Israel counter-protest holding an Israeli hostage release sign. Next, they're standing next to someone in a navy jacket at the back of the protest. 
Minutes later, they're both masked. The orange jacket individual is also captured in this photo. Their right index finger appears to be placed on a white object. AJ Plus has not confirmed what the white object is, but can confirm further similar sightings. Here, the individual in the orange jacket motions their arm with what appears to be a white object in their right hand. In this video obtained by AJ Plus, a white object once more appears to poke out from the individual's right sleeve. This exclusive footage obtained by the Columbia Spectator and shared with AJ Plus shows the navy jacket individual approaching someone from behind. They motion their hand towards the person's backpack with what appears to be a white object. Here, the two individuals linger behind the students. A white object appears again. Prior to the release of footage, a student told the Columbia Spectator that she heard a spraying sound when the two individuals were close to her. She said it started smelling really bad when they moved away. Our visual analysis confirms the two individuals joined the protest masked with kafia-like scars before later returning unmasked. This individual's distinctive shoes are visible in both before and after visuals. Here, his cap and sunglasses also match up. The navy jacket individual was also captured in the protest crowd. His distinctive trousers and shoes are some of the features that line up between the visuals. Our visual analysis shows suspicious activity on the day, but it cannot confirm any links between the two individuals and the alleged chemical attack. Students submitted evidence including photos and videos to Columbia's public safety and the NYPD in the days after the protest. On January 22nd, the university announced that NYPD was leading an investigation into serious crimes on campus, including possible hate crimes. More than two months after the incident, the investigation is ongoing with no arrests. I came here on Saturday, January 20th to report what had happened to me. It felt like I wasn't really being taken seriously or my concerns weren't being taken seriously. The university has not provided us any guidance or anything on how to deal with this. Columbia University says they have banned the alleged perpetrators from campus while the investigation is ongoing. But Palestinian students say the university has failed to ensure their safety and is neglecting the harassment they've reported. They say the university has shown double standards and repressed pro-Palestinian voices on campus since October. The university has turned a blind eye to all cases of discrimination and all cases of clear hate speech against us. The university also continued to silence us. They refused to give us permits to protest. They changed policies for getting uh, permits for events. In November, the administration suspended two student groups, Students for Justice in Palestine and Jewish Voice for Peace, for holding a walkout and temporary art installation. The university said the action violated event policies, which the administration had changed just weeks before without following normal procedures. The New York Civil Liberties Union is suing the university for unlawfully suspending the student groups. In November, the university announced a task force on anti-Semitism. Despite multiple requests from Palestinian students, the university has not announced a task force on Islamophobia or other forms of racism. If the president and the senior administration come and speak with us and know what's in our hearts, what's in our minds, they would know that we are no threat to anyone. Like many other universities in the country, Colombia is facing pressure from donors and politicians. For example, billionaire Leon Cooperman threatened to cut off funding to the university over its response to pro-Palestine protests. I've given to Colombia probably about $50 million over many years, and I'm going to suspend my giving. There's also mounting political pressure. A congressional committee has launched an investigation into anti-Semitism at the university, saying their findings could lead to cuts in federal funding. Columbia's task force on anti-Semitism says Jewish students on campus are facing harassment and racism. A national survey found a quarter of Jewish Americans have faced anti-Semitism in the past year. But Jewish students critical of Israel have said that Colombia's efforts to tackle anti-Semitism are more about suppressing pro-Palestinian speech than protecting Jewish students from racism. Look at what safety really means. You know, who are the students who are being met with consistent death threats and multiple assaults on campus? Palestinian students are increasingly worried for their safety as violence against them has spiked across the country. In a matter of months, a six-year-old Palestinian child was killed, three Palestinian American students were shot, and a Palestinian American man was stabbed. Palestine is our demand! Palestine is our demand! 
Columbia University has increased security, barricaded the university gates and the administration building in preparation for this student protest. Listen, you making a sign? The university's suspension of the pro-Palestinian groups has not stopped students and faculty from gathering. Well, it's very easy to, for the outside world to mischaracterize this as, you know, a bunch of rabble-rousing students or something like this, but we're a community, and the institution tries to bully them and threaten them in various ways. We show up and we say, you're not going to get away with terrorizing your own students. Columbia students today say they're not deterred by the harassment or the attacks. As much bullying and harassment as I'm getting, I know that it's nothing compared to what people in Gaza are going through. We have, you know, a growing amount of Jewish people in the movement because we understand that anti-Semitism has nothing to do with the Palestinian issue. This is not stopping us. In fact, it's making us much stronger. I feel a huge responsibility on my shoulder. Their stories, their pain, their suffering, and the injustice is what's motivating me and keeping me uh, going on this campus. U nastavku priča jednog židovsko-američkog studenta koji danima sudjeluje u pro-palestinskim protestima na Univerzitetu Teksas u Ostinu. Smatra da izraelske akcije u Gazi predstavljaju genocid te da njegovo istupanje u ime palestinaca nije antisemitizam. Ovaj momak koji je izgubio članove porodice u holokaustu suočio se s brojnim optužbama da je izdajnik svog naroda samo zato što, kako tvrdi, radi ono što je pravedno. Poručuje da je palestinska kultura sličnija njegovoj nego bilo kojoj drugoj na svijetu, te da na palestince gleda kao na braću i sestre. My name is Elijah Kallenberg. I am 21 years old. I'm a student here at the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm majoring in Jewish studies, government, and Middle East studies. My father's side is Ashkenazi Jewish, and my mother's side has Sephardic Jewish heritage. I'm a very proud Jew. In most Jewish education, when it comes to Palestinians, you're not told about 1948, you're not told about the Nakba, um, you're typically told um, sometimes outright racist things about Arabs and Palestinians. I began a process of unpacking a lot of what I was told in Hebrew school, um, but also engaging with Palestinians. And a conclusion I came to is that Palestinian culture is more similar to my culture than to any other culture in the world. I am the president and founder of Atidna International. We're a peace group. Atidna combines the Hebrew word Atid for future with the Arabic suffix na for our, and when you put those two together, it means our future. We really just try to promote open dialogue on college campuses to get to know the quote-unquote other. Who are you getting your news I'm from? I'm leaving in Israel. You begin to humanize the other, and I think that's more important now than ever. I believe that the actions in Gaza do constitute a genocide. There are many corporations that are profiteering from what is happening in Gaza, uh, specifically American corporations like Boeing, uh, like Lockheed Martin, and these are the corporations that need to be called out for profiteering from the death and destruction of the Palestinian people. And because students took their First Amendment civil liberties at the university to the forefront, they were repressed. You don't us. I was injured when one of the state troopers charged a crowd with their horse, and I was subsequently pushed to the ground. I was in shock when that happened. Speaking out on behalf of the Palestinian people is not inherently anti-Semitic. I've personally dealt with a lot of accusations that I am either a self-hating Jew, um, and even worse, some have called me a capo, which is a, a Jew who sold out fellow Jews to the Nazis, all for the, the stances I've taken uh, for my Palestinian brothers and sisters. Uh, and that's personally um, very hurtful to me. I lost family in the Holocaust, but it, it doesn't stop me. I understand what I'm doing is just. Uh, I, I am standing with my Palestinian brothers and sisters for a very noble cause, and, and I view them as my families. 
raseljeni palestinci koji borave u kampovima u Rafahu na jugu pojasa Gaze zahvalili su se studentima iz cijelog svijeta na solidarnosti. Palestinci u opkoljenoj Gazi kažu kako čuju studentske pozive na okončanje rata uprko s nastojanjima univerziteta i policije da uguše proteste. Na šatorima u izbjegličkom kampu u Rafahu istaknute su zahvale studentima. Studenti nam daju nado, nastavite biti uz nas, trebamo vas, samo su neke od poruka iz Gaze. This idea came to us after seeing what was happening in the news, especially the support from the students of the world, particularly the students of Columbia University for standing with us, with their humanity, their hearts and their compassion. We hope the world will stand united with them. We hope for the world to support them, not to arrest them and imprison them. Za to vrijeme brojni su demonstranti, studenti i njihovi profesori suočeni s hapšenjima, suspenzijama, izbacivanjem s univerziteta, pa čak i gubitkom posla. Stručnjaci za ljudska prava kažu da Izrael sistematski uništava obrazovni sistem gaze. Tvrde treba će godine da bi se obnovile obrazovne institucije. Izrael je uništio sve univerzitete u Gazi. Isra je posljednji koji je uništen u bombardiranju 17. januara. Izraelske snage ubile su najmanje 260 nastavnika i 95 univerzitetskih profesora. Više od 5400 studenata ubijeno je u Gazi u ovom ratu. Više od pola miliona palestinske djece ne pohađa školu već sedam mjeseci. Izraelski rat protiv Gaze onemogućio je studente s međunarodnim stipendijama da pohađaju univerzitete u inozemstvu. U decembru su izraelske bombe raznijele pet rezervuara s tečnim dušikom u najvećoj klinici za liječenje neplodnosti u Gazi. Uništene su hiljade pohranjenih embrija, a time i snovi brojnih palestinki koje su pokušavale zatrudnjeti. Sagovornici naše reporterke kažu da to pokazuje pravi karakter izraelskog rata protiv Palestine, jer se brišu cijele generacije i sprečava rađanje novih. 4.000 embriona potencijalnih života uništeno je jednim izraelskim napadom. Uništene su i nade više stotina palestinaca. Nađva Abu Hamada jedna je od njih, no ovo je samo jedna od patnji koju je izraelski rat donio. Nađva kao i mnoge druge žene u centru za van tjelesnu oplodnju Albasma godinama su prolazile fizičke i psihičke iscrpljujuće tretmane. Proces je to u kojim je vrijeme privilegija. Osnivač klinike Baha Eldin Galaini sada je na putu za Egipat kako bi pomogao drugima koji se bore s neplodnošću. Rekao nam je kako je to za mnoge bila posljednja šansa. About half of them will never have children again. It was the worst time for me to tell them sorry, your embryos are lost. As if you say to someone, sorry, tomorrow you will die. U istom izraelskom napadu uništeno je hiljad uzoraka sperme i neoplođenih jajnih ćelija, primjer neviđenog danka izraelskog vojnog napada. Nađva je napustila gazu i sada traže liječenje u Kataru, ali kaže da je jasno da Izrael ne želi postojanje palestinaca. أجل احتلال يعني شوف أنت يعني الوضع شوف يعني مين مين أي أي شرع وأي إسلام وأي أي قانون. بولز بوجوبيت كبريسوت نايسودا وغازي. نادوا ودكتور غالايني سونا ترنوتا كبابيغ لزرات نزونة، ألي أبوه سنادا يودت يسيد نقدانا براتيتي. Qatar has been at the forefront of countries providing medical assistance to Palestinians from Gaza. 
but Israel's destruction of a fertility clinic and its embryos strikes at the very core of Palestine, a war that is wiping out generations and preventing future ones. Julie Dager, Al Jazeera, Doha. Ako ste propustili nešto iz sadržaja emisije, potrebno je da ukucate balkans.aljazira.net gdje su sve naše priče i analize. Ponovno smo s vama za sedam dana. Doviđenja.